So you got your hands on your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, and you're wondering, is there anything to make the transition from the Mark I to the Mark II a little bit easier? Or maybe, you know, your camera hasn't come in yet, and this is the first time handling something like this. You're wondering, is there anything, like I said, that will make that uh, period a little bit more smoothly for you when you first get your camera? Well, I got some tips and some things that I wish I would have known about after having it for about 40 hours. And I think I've watched almost every single video review of the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II when it was first announced and people had their hands on it for like a week early or whatever. And they were talking about some things, but there's some things that I noticed that those people didn't talk about. And I think it's because they simply have other cameras that already do some of the things that the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II can do. So to them, it's kind of like a no brainer, but there's a lot of people out there who are getting cameras, especially probably the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for the first time that nobody's telling them about because again to them it's common sense so this video is not for those people who are going to look at these tips and be like oh that's common sense you know um, these are for people that don't know about these options or ways to set up certain things within the sony zve 10 mark ii to make it a little bit smoother for their workflow so hopefully i can cover some of them today and if you find any of them helpful then don't forget to you know leave the video a like let me know in the comments down below if it helped you and if you find it helpful and you want to, you can consider subscribing or joining the memberships or wherever on the channel. With that being said, let's hop into the first one. The first one is going to be the fact of if you want to use the, I would say the capability of the time lapse in this camera, or you want to be able to have access to certain shooting, I would say, options within this camera with S-Log3 and all that stuff. And you know, you're moving up or wherever after using the camera for a bit and you wanna try it out or anything like that, you're gonna have to get the right SD card. And my problem with that is that I have all these V30s and it was just because they were cheap SD cards. I have three different cameras. I never needed anything more than this. It was perfectly fine for my workflow. And now I record everything into OBS through like PC and like capture cards and all that stuff. But I wanted to get the camera of the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II uh, because one of the options on here is to shoot that uh, time-lapse mode to make it, you know, naturally in the camera and not have to do it in post. And that's why I've always stayed away from, you know, doing time-lapses because it was just too complicated, too difficult for me to set up. I'm a very busy person. I don't have time to sit there and post and make time-lapses and color grade like photos and do all that stuff. And this would seem like to be a easier workflow. I saw it when it came out with the Sony Alpha 6700 and I was always tempted to get that camera, but it just didn't have enough for me to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go out and purchase it. Whereas I think this one has a great combo. And I do think that you can use, I kind of checked it uh, with that time-lapse mode. It does look like you can use that cine vlog mode with it or whatever. So that's very, very nice, but you're going to need to get an SD card again, that says V90 or above. And what's gonna end up happening is when you go into the actual time-lapse mode, what you're gonna wanna do is actually go over to your SNQ. And when you go over to your SNQ, you will see the intelligent SNQ, but you can go down and uh, shoot into the intelligent auto mode SNQ, but you see the little clock interface right there. And that's telling you that it's going to be, you know, your time lapse. And, uh, and you can see in the description, it will say time lapse. And then obviously you can go from auto to, to program, auto to you know aperture priority, all that stuff, manual focus and everything. But once you go in there and you go in there and if you're shooting in the this option or whatever, the SI 4K, and you're trying to record the time lapses and stuff like that, bigger uh, file sizes and everything, you're gonna need to get a actual different SD card. Now, that's only if, again, you're shooting in the time lapse mode or any other mode or wherever, and you're trying to make a bigger file, and maybe you have SLOG3 turned on, all that stuff or wherever. If you switch over to this mode, um, it's going to give you that error message. So just keep in mind, but if you go up to in any one of these right here, and then you go here and then you click record, it's going to record and it's not going to give you a problem or issue. But I just want to make you guys aware of that because those bigger file sizes and stuff like that, that's if again, you're shooting with a color picture profile and you're trying to, you know, color grade and get the most, I would say, uh, dynamic, uh, 
I would say information out of your file. So again, you can color grade and do more, I would say probably more professional work. The people that are probably going to do this is probably already going to have a better SD card. But the problem is, is that a lot of people that I have seen, at least the videos out setting this camera up so far are telling people to shoot in that, you know, 4K, I would say, uh, recording mode. The problem is, is that they're not telling you that you're going to have to get a better SD card than the cheaper ones out there. And nine times out of 10, if you just spent a thousand dollars on the camera and maybe you got the young new 16 millimeter or 11 millimeter lens for less than $300, you probably don't really have that much money to be buying almost like a 200 or more for an SD card for a proper one, not one of those cheap ones that might break off in the camera or one of those cheap ones or wherever, maybe you're going with a Sony branded one or a tough card or whatever other SD cards people are rep recommending out there. If anyone knows of a reputable one that's going to be really good for you know this use case scenario, maybe they have one already, you can leave a recommended one down in the comments. But in my personal opinion, it's like if people are telling you to shoot in that mode and they're not telling you that, you know, you can't go out and get one of these very, very cheap SD cards like I have gotten or wherever, that's kind of like a, a you know, kind of like a no brainer for them. Because like I said, they're probably doing more professional work. So they're getting better SD cards and like having re redundant like systems and stuff like that. Maybe they're using full frame cameras with double SD card slots, stuff like that. But again, that's something that you should know about and be wary about as far as like trying to use the time lapse mode and stuff. And you're trying to shoot in those higher, I would say encoding stuff or wherever. That's just me, but I don't think too many people will run into that issue, but it is something that I wanted you to, to make you guys aware of. Another thing is, is that these batteries are um, super old as far as being on the market for the Sony ZV E10 Mark II. So you've probably seen it already when I did the top down, but you're gonna wanna get yourself a dummy battery. When your camera's coming in or wherever, the battery, at least for me, was not charged, obviously, for you know shipping and stuff reasons, probably. But you're going to want to get yourself a dummy battery to be able to hook this up to the wall if you're in your studio. I'll leave this one linked in the description. This is just from newer. You know, it's a it's just a regular battery. And I would go with something like this or wherever from this brand because I've already had really good uh, customer support with them. So if something goes wrong with the dummy battery, then I can expect like a good you know, return policy or exchange policy and stuff from them. The other companies that are out there, they might have some good ratings or whatever, but I just don't know about them personally, but I would just go with this brand and I would go ahead and get it before your camera comes in. Um, just because sometimes, you know, this one was delayed uh, and it was supposed to actually come before my Sony ZV-1 and it was delayed and then it came a day later because it was delayed to like the 8th and then it came in the 3rd and I had ordered it on July like 30th or whatever. And I have Amazon Prime. It was supposed to come in on August 1st when the camera was supposed to come in on August 2nd. And then August 1st came around and it was like, hey, it's delayed to the 8th. And then it randomly showed up today. So again, you're going to want to probably do that if you're trying to get this up and running and you're wanting to use it for your studio or something like that. You're probably going to want to do that. Another thing is, is like, like I said, since these batteries do not come uh, charged and like I said, I don't think there was a USB cable in the box. So what you're gonna wanna do is probably get you some kind of battery recharging thing because yes, I was able to use the USB port on the camera to supply power to the battery, but there's probably some fast chargers out there or wherever that come in like a little carrying case kind of thing that's gonna be mobile for you anyways that you can throw in your camera bag that's gonna charge your batteries as you go. You're probably going to want to pick up something like that anyways, if you're going to be vlogging and everything and you can find one. I found one that was like an 18 watt, like rechargeable, like thing that could recharge two batteries for like 50 something bucks on Amazon. There's one that comes with two batteries and a charging case or whatever for like $115. But you could, since it only comes with one battery and maybe you want to stay with the Sony branded batteries, you could always get a one later, but at least having that charging case already ready. So when you're camera comes in you could just put it in there it's probably going to be a lot faster than trying to charge it through usb through your camera and yeah 
you're probably going to want to do that just letting you know so if you're going to be using the sony zv e10 mark ii and potentially you use the sony zv1 mark one or maybe the sony zv1 you probably already know that the overheating is pretty bad on both of those cameras so just as a precautionary measure i would say another tip for the sony zv e10 mark ii that you're probably going to want to go ahead and get especially if you are recording in those higher file formats or wherever especially if you got the right sd card you're probably going to want to pick up this fan from you Lonzi. This is the older one with the suction cups or whatever. I don't know if they discontinued it, but you can get the upgraded one that's going to attach perfectly fine on the back of your Sony ZV E10 Mark II. I use it on the Mark I all the time and never had a problem or an issue with it overheating after, you know, getting myself that fan. And if you're sitting in a studio and you have professional lighting and stuff like that, you're probably going to want to pick up the fan or whatever. It's going to be necessary. It's like 30 to 40 something dollars or whatever. I think it's like $36 or something. I have it linked in the description but that is a must-have if you get like the dummy battery and you're going to be running this thing or wherever and you're going to be recording for long periods of time or using this camera for streaming you're gonna want even if you're using the S, uh, usb and not hdmi whatever you're gonna want to get that fan the zv series of cameras or wherever are notorious for overheating just because of how the body is and everything i haven't used it strenuously enough to get it to overheat but like i said precautionary measure just get yourself the fan it is a necessity now lastly i'm going to talk about actually getting the LUTs onto the camera because i didn't see anybody really talking about this or wherever on how to upload the LUTs to the camera so what you're going to want to do even if you don't have a sony branded sd card it still worked for me but what you're going to want to do is format the sd card i'll try to put the information on screen while i talk but you're going to want to format the sd card and then in the format sd card you're going to want to go to a file path i'll go ahead and put it on screen or wherever you'll find it in the sd card some people say that with the sony ones or wherever it's automatically made and some will say without the sony branded sd cards it won't be automatically made but if for whatever reason your sd card is not you know already making this automatically even when you format it you can still make it yourself and it will still work and then what you're going to want to do is go through that file port format uh path or wherever and then you're going to want to upload wherever let's wherever that you have onto the sd card what i would recommend is naming them specifically instead of having like the brand or the persons whoever you got the let from or wherever just put like s log three or wherever s log two you know hlg three to rec 709 or whatever dot cube because you need the dot q files and what you're going to want to do obviously is just leave it like that because the scrolling of uh, the text wherever is not going to happen on the camera so if you have all this stuff before you know it says s log 3 and etc you're not going to see that on the camera so just try to limit the characters down so you know which let you're picking but once you do that or wherever and you upload the luts to the camera then you're perfectly fine to delete them off your sd card and if you're wondering some cheap alternatives for LUTs out there i recommend paul leeming um he has like four or five i think maybe six LUTs or whatever for the sony camera series and he has some for other cameras out there i will go ahead and leave his website linked in the description it was like 30 bucks they're just as far as i understand like corrective or conversion LUTs or something like that that's what i use for my camera that you're looking at right now or wherever that i did for the talking head video portion um i'm shooting an hlg3 on the sony zv e10 mark one and i've been doing that for a long time now and i've been liking it and what i've done is you know have the parameters and stuff set for the camera but in obs i uploaded the filter or wherever for the camera lut as a lut in the properties section or wherever of obs and you know the lut is applied so i don't have to color grade my footage because again i'm recording it straight into obs i have my microphone already eq'd and stuff like that and it's just an easier workflow and again for like 30 bucks to have access to uh, s log 3 you know s cine tone all that stuff or wherever already it's a really really good i would say LUTs or wherever and if you needed some more creative LUTs or wherever obviously you can go with the myriad of content creators out there who make their own LUTs or you know looking at Sony's official stuff or something like that but some of the LUT kits and stuff out there from these YouTubers and content creators who do this stuff they're like 50 60 70 or more for this stuff or wherever and if you want just a generic one and I think my footage looks decent you know what I'm saying and I'm just using this $30 LUT you know what I'm saying and it comes with a lot of them so again it's just depending you can just do an easy color grade like this or wherever or converting it or something like that and that's it and I've never gotten any complaints on how my videos look with that being said check out another video that I did about talking 
talking about the product accessories and recommendations for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And congratulations on getting yourself a really good camera. Hopefully these tips helped you out. And if they did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you wanna see some product reviews that I normally do on the channel, don't forget to check out that product review playlist at the end of the video and check out the live stream link down in the description as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Enjoy your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II.